Okay, so this is going to be online. It'll be posted on Blackboard. So if you want to go back and watch it later, it's there. Don't. Hopefully, you'll just remember. So I'm going to go here to Express. Okay. So the first thing I always do is I grab a while loop. Okay. So um, right here is a while loop. So I'm just going to take that out. I'm going to drag it. Um, this is really nice from the Express menu because it already has a control on it. Okay, so it's got a stop button there. So if I go to the front panel, I'll put a stop button there. Okay, so I'm just going to drag that down here. And then whenever I run this program, it's just going to, I can always uh, stop it. Okay. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is right here, right? Um, it's going to be analog input, okay? So if you're under the express menu, you go to input, okay? Um, and we're actually going to do output, okay? So go to express and then output, and this first one here is your DAC assistant, okay? So just drag it over there, click on it once, and then boom, put it over there, okay? So when you have a DAC card, in your computer, the DAC assistant will automatically recognize it. And so we're just going to say acquire signals and we're going to do analog input. Okay. And I'm going to click right here under voltage. Okay. So now it brings up for your device here. Okay. You should see PCI 16E or the other one is going to be USB. 6009, and I don't have those installed yet. But I know from before that I picked analog input 6, okay? So I'm just going to click on that and go finish. And now this is a little compact because it's on my screen, so I'm, gonna, I'm just going to make this bigger, okay? So um, for your analog input, you can always see here under details if you ever forget what channel it was, okay? You can go here and you can find out what channel it was. You can go hide details, right? So you can always remove the channel if you want. You can go yes, and then you can go back and add another one real quick. So you can go voltage, and then you can select analog 6. Again, analog input 6. Okay, so I'm going to go hide details. And then over here, uh, it's got some other options here, okay? So it's got a, you've got your your max voltage and your min voltage, okay? Now, when you pick your maximum and your minimum voltage, it's really important to think about your type of measurements, okay? Because if you're measuring a very small voltage, you're gonna want a higher resolution. Now, the way that National Instruments picks the resolution of your DAC card is it takes your, your dynamic range here of your voltage, right? So if you pick from minus 10 to plus 10, that's going to be a very sort of coarse resolution. So you're not going to have a lot of um, fine tuning with that. Okay, now if you're doing millivolts, right, you could set the max here to say 0.1 millivolt and then the minimum to minus 0.1 volts. And that's going to give you a really small uh, resolution. That's going to allow you to detect very small voltages. Okay. Um, so if you're it's important to think about um, your range here, your signal input range, and you only want to pick it um, so that you're, you know, you get the best resolution possible. Okay, so pick it as small as possible. Now, I, if you if you remember one thing from class today, if you're sleeping or whatever, just remember this one thing. If you're having trouble with your DAC card is probably because of the terminal configuration, okay? This is a very, like, subtle setting, and you're like, what does that even mean, terminal configuration? That is the way that your DAC card is grounded, okay? If you're having problems, you're not able to read a voltage, it's probably because you picked the wrong one, okay? Some of these computers and DAC cards, they're getting a little old, and they can be a little finicky. Okay, so play around with this terminal configuration. If it's not working, 
right? You need to have a checklist of things you're going to check. I guarantee you it's not going to work the first time you do it, okay? So, one thing to check here is your terminal configuration. Okay, there's a bunch of different options. Um, differential can be a little tricky. This is if you're connecting to like another piece of equipment, okay? Um, if you're just reading a voltage from a battery, you're probably going to want to try RSE, okay? And then over here, it, there's this uh, really sort of um, terse, description of what the different terminal configurations are. So differential, depending on your specific hardware, the positive and negative inputs for the physical channel are either unreferenced or are connected to a measurement system. But you can read through this and you know these are written by um, technical people so they're very like very terse. Okay? If there's an option to let NIDAC choose. It's always a good idea to let the DAC card choose. You can try that, okay? But if that doesn't work, sometimes it doesn't, you're going to have to play around with that. So try and change those configurations. You're not going to hurt anything. Now, there's also calibration. Don't mess with that. These national instruments recommend that you send them back every year and have them calibrated. And that's only $150. Uh, so, needless to say, they haven't been calibrated probably ever. Uh, these are actually, before I started working here, they were sitting in a closet for about 10 years. Okay, so they've, they haven't been calibrated, but that's okay. It's not important. Don't, don't mess with the calibration. Right? The other thing that is really, really critical and is probably going to mess you up, okay? In fact, I guarantee you you're going to have issues with this, okay? Is, uh, it's this other setting right here. It has to do with the number of samples to read, okay? Under acquisition mode, if we click on this menu here, there are a whole bunch of different, um, different things you can choose, okay? Um, you can pick in samples, so you could say, okay, either output 100 samples or read 100 samples, okay? You could specify that. Just because of experience, I know that we're going to pick one sample on demand, but a lot of times you won't know what is going to be the best option. And I'm pretty sure you'll pick the wrong one and it's not going to work and you're going to get an error. So, let's intentionally pick the wrong one and see what happens, okay? And, um... Now another really important, this is sort of a critical feature too, is um, it's your, the samples to read and the rate that you are going to read samples, okay? So, um, now in a lot of our experiments, I'm going to ask you to actually record a data file of what you've been taking in. Now these DAC cards, especially the PCI ones, are capable of taking data on the order of megahertz. Okay? So needless to say, if you record data for five minutes and you're taking one sample every one millionth of a second, okay, that's going to be a lot of data points. After five minutes, you're going to have five million data points. So I don't know if you've ever tried to open an Excel file with 5 million data points on it. Well, let's just say that uh, Bill Gates did not make Windows powerful enough to handle that kind of abuse. Okay? Plus, most of the time, you're not going to need millions of data points. Right? You might want to take a data point maybe every one second. Okay? So, uh, but this is something to think about. Um, and there's other ways you can control how many data points you take too. But just remember, don't make an Excel file with a million data points. I, because I don't want to open that on my computer, and it, it's just not good. So, this is sort of an overview. Now, we're gonna go okay here. Okay. So we have our DAC assistant now, and hopefully we have uh, we've got the right settings for the DAC assistant. We've got our stop button here. Okay. Now, um, if you look at the front panel. We still 
only have the stop button. Okay, so you're probably going to want to read the data somehow, I'm assuming. So go back to the back panel, and it's always good to go right click on it and go create, go create control. Okay, but now I clicked create control, but you see there's no wire connected. So why isn't there a wire connected to our DAC card? Because I made a control, but the DAC card is just reading data, right? So it doesn't make sense to put a control on it if it's just reading a value. Okay, so even though I created a control, right, it's not connected and it doesn't really make sense. So I'm just going to delete that. So, but right click here and go uh, create a numeric indicator, okay? Right? So I can do this, and then um, I'll go here and I'll click on this, and I'll hit run. Now you're like, wait a minute, we were uh, we were supposed to be uh, uh, creating a control unit, right? And I actually forgot that we were trying to make make a control thing. But now we're actually just reading the voltage uh, that is coming in on channel analog input six, okay? So this is cool. So we just made a, a little multimeter, okay? So now we can actually see, oh, okay, this is the raw voltage that's coming in from the multimeter, from the, the signal generator. Okay, so we're just going to leave that there, and I'll hit stop. And then over here, we're going to go here, and we'll just call this VN, right? So if you, if you ever want to, you can always click on something, and you can relabel it. That's really helpful if you don't know what things are because it's always good programming to sort of document things. Okay, so here we're going to go um, analog input and then we're going to put another DAC assistant here. So I think what happened was I clicked on acquire signals just out of habit or whatever, but we actually wanted to generate a signal. So it actually doesn't matter if you go to express input or output. Once you have a DAC assistant there, you can still choose what you want. So this time, we'll go to generate signal, we'll go to analog input, and then we'll pick voltage, okay? Now, again, we only have um, two analog outputs, so we're going to use analog output zero, because that's what back in the lab is hooked to the signal generator, because I and the signal generator back in the lab, and I'm actually collecting data. And, yeah. So, um, we'll pick that one, and then we'll go finish, okay? And then here, um, under settings, we'll go down, so our, our max voltage is 10, and our minimum voltage is minus 10, and we're just going to, uh, our terminal configuration, we'll just leave that as RSE, because I don't think it matters. And then here, now, I know for a fact it's supposed to be one sample on demand, but we're going to pick in samples on demand, okay? Because I know that it's going to fail. So, now I want to go to the front panel here, and I like to, um, I just like to use knobs, because I think it's, uh, it's, I just like it better. So, I'm going to drag this over here, okay? And if you want to make this thing bigger, right, you can... So I can, I can make a really big one if I want to, right? You just stretch it out and, whoa, look at that. That's cool. So now I, get, I can see. Oh, so it's, you have to, like, click on just the right thing so you can drag it bigger. Okay, so now it's got nice divisions there, right? Now, if you make a knob this big, it might not be really convenient if you have other things on the front panel. But it's easy to see, so we're just going to pick this big one here, okay? So now I'm going to hit run. I'm going to go run. And then it says, oh, there's an error, right? So I'm going to hit stop. And then um, that's because under here, under settings, it should be one sample on demand. So I'm going to click that. I'm going to go okay. And now 
I'm going to click run.